An Illinois lawmaker is demanding accountability and change following a staggering discovery by the CBS2 investigators. 90% of child abuse and neglect allegations made against foster care parents were classified as unfounded. Tonight, Dave Savini talks with former foster children who say the system lets abusers get away with it as the number of allegations continues to rise. There is a serious issue with DCFS. It is a child protective service, but yet these kids don't feel protected. Illinois State Representative Lakeisha Collins knows about foster care abuse. She grew up in the DCFS system, but what she didn't know was just how overwhelmingly often Illinois foster care parents are cleared of abuse and neglect allegations. It's really, really mind you know, boggling for me. How many of you suffered abuse in foster homes. Last month, we showed you how these 14 foster care survivors came forward to CBS to help expose this troubling pattern of unfounded abuse within DCFS. How young were you when you were first abused? Probably 12. I was physically and mostly abused. I was like beaten. Collins was watching and could relate to their traumas. Did you see yourself in that group of 14? Yes, yes. Those, those former youth of care, they were not lying. They were telling the truth. The CBS2 investigators conducted an exhaustive analysis of how thousands of child abuse and neglect allegations dating back to 2016 were handled by DCFS. Every child has an eight-digit ID number. After a lengthy battle for records, we obtained never-before-seen data revealing a deeply troubling pattern. When an allegation of child abuse or neglect is made, nine out of ten times, DCFS classifies it as unfounded. Did you have any idea that the numbers were as big as we found? No, I did not. I did not, and it's disheartening. Collins, who's been trying to reform the agency, says despite repeated requests, DCFS has stonewalled her from getting the kind of crucial data the CBS2 investigators have now uncovered. In the foster care data DCFS did turn over, we found cries for help are climbing. In 2016, 961 claims. In 2021, that number shot up to 1,205, a 25% increase for complaints of abuse and neglect. So you're saying CBS, Chicago has this data. You have the data and I don't, and I'm the lawmaker. And a light bulb's going off. It is, because what else are we not getting? The most common form of abuse we found in the DCFS data involves physical harm and neglect allegations like bone fractures, head injuries, burns and torture. In a staggering number of these allegations, 91% unfounded by DCFS investigators. I've been neglected. I've been physically, sexually, mentally abused. And they know and how sad. to hit you. They know how to hit you without leaving marks. Did any of your abusers get convicted? No. no. Collins says she was a teenager when a foster parent physically assaulted her. You were beaten up while you were in foster care. She beat me up, right? In front of other kids in the house. You want to make a change in the system. I do. How many more kids got to die? How many more have to get raped or harmed in the current operations? No child should go through that. That's why I keep my Take the case of Kaylin Brown, sexually assaulted when she was just five. It's not common for kids to catch an STD as young as I did, but that's the first time I caught my STD when I was five. Kaylin says her cries for help went unanswered after two men sexually assaulted her during her time in foster care. And how old again are you? I'm 19. Kaylin says despite trips to the hospital and rape kits, DCFS left her in abusive homes. The data the CBS2 investigators obtained contains more than 6,000 abuse and neglect allegations made against 3,200 foster parents. And while nearly 90% of all abuse and neglect allegations were deemed unfounded, Sexual offense allegations like sexual abuse risk, molestation, penetration, and exploitation are also unfounded by DCFS 88% of the time. What did the DCFS data that we uncovered and organized, what did that say to you? What did, what did you see in those numbers? Whew, that it is a, 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 his, a culture that has allowed this system to, to cover up abuse. When CBS requested the records of how many of those 6,000 allegations DCFS referred to police, 
DCFS told us they couldn't turn that over because they don't have it. They don't keep track. The public looks at it as if you're being, de you know, you're deceiving the public. You want to pass a law that will require DCFS to track these cases? Yes. The tracking part is important because how then can you see the red flags? She says even her allegation of abuse in foster care was never investigated. It was like it never happened. And nobody ever reported it to police? No. Police, police were not notified. The caseworker never followed up with me. That is the culture of this system. And that is why what you all are doing is so important. Collins now wants accountability from a system that has kept its records shrouded in secrecy for decades. Right now, we're losing. We're losing. We're losing lives. Kids who could have promising futures, who could be the next doctor, scientist, you know, um, lawyer. Their dreams are cut short because they were neglected. For more than a year and a half, DCFS has been telling the CBS2 investigators they don't have police referral data. But late today, DCFS changed its story, and they're now telling us they do have that data after all, and are now finally working on giving it to us. Dave Savini, CBS2 Investigators. Dave, thank you for your reporting. You can watch more of the CBS2 Investigators' extensive reporting on DCFS on our website, cbschicago.com.